In this section, we will learn how to specify a custom user model. We will then learn how to register models for Django's built-in admin interface. We will also look at model relationships and at the Django query set API. And in the last video of this section, we will add authentication to our project. The first video of this section introduces user accounts and the Django admin interface. We will learn how to specify a custom user model for our Django application. And we will learn how to register our models so we can manage our data via the Django admin interface. Let's create an app to contain all functionality related to students. We use the command manage by start app students. And then we edit the file students models.py. Okay, this file will hold the models that are related to students. We will specify a custom user model for our application. And this custom user model will also go into this file because after all, most of our users will be students. We then edit this file and we add an import here for the class abstract user. And then we subclass our own user class from abstract user. And in this case, we can keep it very simple and we just keep the subclass empty. We don't add any custom functionality to the abstract base class here. The reason we still create a custom user model and don't just use Django's default user model is that this makes migrations much easier later in the project when we may end up in a situation where we actually need to do this. So I highly recommend that you always do this. Always use a custom user model right from the beginning before you have any production data, any real user accounts in your project. This can make your life much easier later down the road. There is also some very good documentation about this on the official Django website. I have provided you with the link here. We then added our settings module in e-learning slash settings.py and we go to the installed app setting and here we add our new app just at the end of the list. And there is one more setting we need to configure. We must tell Django which app holds our custom user model and which model it is. So right here I add a new setting called auth user model and the value for this is the string students user. Okay, and then we save the settings file. We now must create a new database migration because we have a new model. So we use the command manage by make migrations students. Okay, and then we apply that migration using manage by migrate. Okay, and here you can see that we run into a problem. The reason for this is that we had already applied some migrations and now we have an inconsistent migration history. This is one of the reasons why it's much better to start with a custom user model right when you begin developing your project. But in our case, this is not such a big issue because we do not have any real valuable production data yet. We can simply delete our database. This means that we lose the example data we have in there so far, but that's okay. We can easily recreate that. And now we rerun the command manage by migrate again. And now it's working fine. We will do that soon using the Django admin interface. And what we do right now is we create a super user so we can later access the Django admin. You can pick any username and any arbitrary email address. This does not actually send an email, so it doesn't need to be a real email address. And then you can choose a password. I'm using test1234 here. Um, this password passes the password validation that checks for our minimum password complexity. So um, it's a convenient one to use for local development, but obviously you should use a proper secure password if you make this application um, available on the internet. So please keep that in mind. Change your development passwords or use a more secure more random password right away. Django's automatic admin interface is one of Django's best known features and it can be extremely convenient while developing. We open the file courses admin.py in our text editor. 
We then edit the file to look like this. We add an import for our course model here and then we write a new class subclassing from admin.modeladmin. In this case the class can stay empty because we don't need to do any customizations here and then we must register our course admin class and to do that we call the function admin.site.register from the django.contract.admin module and we provide this function with our model and our admin class. That's all we need to do to get a simple management interface for our course model. We now go to our web browser. As you can see here, the course list is empty because we deleted our database. We now go to localhost 8000 slash admin. And then we log in with the super user account that we just created. Okay. And then you can see that courses is listed here and we can just click on add. And then we can enter a new name for our course. Let's call it just a test course. Okay, and that's it. We now have a new course object in our database. Let's add another course, another test course. If we now look at the list of model instances here, you can see that both are called course object. And of course, this is not very helpful because we cannot differentiate between them. So let's fix that. We open courses slash models.py and then we add a new method to our course model called under 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 of self. And in this case, we can just return the course name. So return self.name. Uh, one thing to note about this method in case you are using Python 2 is that on Python 2 it's called under under unicode under under instead of str. There also is a compatibility helper to make the name str work on Python 2 as well. However, I recommend that you use Python 3 for any new Python development you do. If you then reload the course list in the admin in your web browser, you can see that we now have the actual course names here. Now let's add the user model to our admin as well. So we added students slash admin.py and this works exactly the same as with the course model. We import our model and then we define a new class subclassing from admin.modeladmin. It can stay empty in this case. And again, we use admin.site.register to register it. That's it. And if you now look at the Django admin again, you can see that we have a new section for the students app and here is our user model. There are many features of Django that I cannot explain in detail in the screencast due to time constraints. So at this point, um, I want to say something about the official Django documentation. I highly recommend that you familiarize yourself with the official documentation. It's really excellent. In my opinion, it's um, probably the best documentation of any open source project that is in widespread use. So take a look at the official documentation. It will help you increase your skills a lot. The documentation is also updated with each new Django release by the Django developers, while information you may find elsewhere can be outdated sometimes. Okay, that's all I have for this video.